Hi everyone. If you're new here, my name's Emma Colbert and I love painting all sorts of animals in pastel. So much so that my favourite pastel brand, Unison Colour, asked me to design a set specifically for painting animals. So today I thought I would talk you through my 36 set and how you can make use of some of these colours in your own work. The most daunting part of getting started in pastel is knowing what colours to buy. These are high quality artist materials and they're not cheap, so you want to make good choices, choose colours that you'll get some use out of. So sometimes buying a set to get you started is a great idea and it can even encourage you to try out some colours that you wouldn't have otherwise. The first important collection of colours are the light tints. I use this top row in everything. Pure white or grey 28 in unison code isn't a colour that I use very much as white things tend to reflect a lot of their surroundings. I often use grey 27 as my brightest highlight. The row to the right continues with some warm tints into the fleshy end of my palette. These colours provide choices for tongues, inside ears, inner corners of eyes, etc. There's always a lot of use for those fleshy tones on many animals. On the second row, we have a very distinctive, cool and warm section, designed to inspire you to make some braver colour choices. Black fur in particular reflects a lot of surrounding colour. You'll often get the blues of a sky reflected on the coat of a dark, shiny dog, for example. So from light to dark, the blue violets and greys give you shadow colours as well as cool highlights. But to inject warmth into your animal, the next row across has a selection of yellows and reds. Brown and tan animals can be really complex and depending on the lighting you can often find vibrant alternatives to describe how the light dances off the fur. You can also use this middle row combined to show warm light and cool shadows. So you can see here on what can be just a black animal if photographed in dull lighting, the cows have so much warmth in their coats. This contrasted to the shadow areas makes use of those opposite colours. So I did say the browns and tans are tricky which is why I've devoted so much space to the browns in this set. I've painted so many different types of animal and always find myself struggling to get just the right shade of brown. So in this selection, I can cover most of what I paint on a daily basis. From light to dark again, it gives you a range of both warm and slightly cooler browns. In this piece you can see the warmer brown earths used along with some A17 from the previous row. From domestic animals to farm animals and wildlife, I've tested this set a lot and one animal I often struggled to have the exact browns for was horses. And you can see some of that cooler brown earth 36 used on the shadow side of the face. Everything you paint is being hit by light coming from somewhere. And to paint it believably, you need the colours to describe both sides, both light and shadow. But even in a limited number of colours like this, you can create a lot of animals very realistically. I hope this set acts as a starting point for artists. The whole idea is to explore colour and get the confidence to push boundaries. This gives you the basics of what you need in a palette to paint animals and over time you'll find other colours to substitute for my own favourites. Even since making this set I have many new favourites but I still know that this box I could survive with. If you want to add a few colours it's a good idea to add some greens. The next thing you might consider is adding a background to your animal portraits so greens will always be a useful addition.
I wanted to show you the parcels from the animal set organized in a different way. This is a useful exercise to do with your own parcel collection. Try putting your parcels in order of tonal value. So if you were to grayscale everything, what would be lightest to darkest? Then try and organize them by hue, perhaps from the warmest to the coolest. So what you see here is the set displayed showing you roughly light to dark as top to bottom and warm to cool as you go left to right. But I'm going to do more videos on choosing a palette and analyzing and describing color as just knowing some of the basics surrounding this makes life a lot easier. As beautiful as this box looks, remember they are there to be used, not stared at in awe. So rip those papers off and break them when you need to. They become most useful when they get worn down a bit. So get busy and go and create some animal pastel masterpieces. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. Come and visit my Patreon channel for real-time tutorials and lots more. Thanks to Patreon, I'm able to make a lot more content in the coming months. Thanks for watching.